Acadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Sunday, January 22nd, 2023. Good morning. I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin today with some updates on developments resulting from the auto accident last Tuesday, which took the life of Jamin Pugh, a.k.a. Jay Briscoe. Pugh's daughters, 12-year-old Gracie and 9-year-old Jay Lee, have been recovering from injuries sustained during the accident, according to a Facebook post from family friends. Gracie underwent surgery for a broken hip as well as to relieve pressure on the spinal column during the early morning hours of last Wednesday after initially losing feeling from the waist down. The operation was reported to be a success with Gracie recovering feeling in her lower extremities and beginning physical therapy last Friday. Gracie has also reportedly begun regaining mobility, though nothing below the knee as of yesterday. Jaylee has been treated with surgery for a broken tibia and fibula and also suffered breaks of the C7 neck vertebrae as well as the L3 and L4 vertebrae in the back. She is expected to be in a neck brace for six weeks and a back brace for 12. A Give, Send, Go fundraising campaign has been started to help with the family's medical costs with nearly $278,000 having been raised from 2,755 donations as of this morning. Among the highest contributors within the wrestling business were Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, Matt and Nick Jackson, and Kevin Owens. In ratings news, last Friday's SmackDown experienced a slight dip from the previous week in the overnight ratings report, with 2.113 million viewers as opposed to the previous week's 2.182 million, according to Spoiler TV. The overnight rating in the key 18 to 49 year old demographic was 0. .50, tied for the number one spot on network TV for the evening with Shark Tank on ABC. Full ratings figures for SmackDown are expected early in the week. In news out of Mexico, Negro Casas and Dalis have made their debuts for AAA, making a surprise appearance at the company's television tapings last night in Quetaro, Mexico. Casis and Dalis are married and have spent their entire professional careers working primarily for CMLL. The 63-year-old Casas began with CMLL in 1981 and since then has only made two appearances for AAA, both taking place on jointly promoted cards, first in 1992 while working for the now-defunct Universal Wrestling Association and again in 2000 while working for CMLL. The 47-year-old Dalis has never appeared for AAA before. What this means for Casas' upcoming appearances in CMLL is undetermined at this time. Casas is scheduled to appear at CMLL shows upcoming this week in Puebla and Guadalajara. Casas, a second-generation star, has been part of many big CMLL matches and shows throughout his career, holding multiple championships, participation in the first Super J Cup, and notable hair versus hair and hair versus mask matches against Eddie Guerrero, Hijo del Santo, Bestia Salvaje, Mystico, and Roche. Turning to Japan, in what was being billed as the final in-ring appearance of the great Muta persona, Keiji Muto donned the paint for the last time today, teaming with Sting and Darby Allin to defeat Naomichi Marufuji, Hakushi, and Akira. Titled Great Muta Final Bye-Bye at the Yokohama Arena, Muta took the pinfall victory for his team after finishing Hakushi with the Shining Wizard knee strike. In January of 1988, a 25-year-old Muda was sent on excursion to Puerto Rico before moving on to Dallas for World Class Championship Wrestling in August of that year. There, he worked with manager Gary Hart. The idea for the persona was developed by Hart and took several twists and turns from the time Muda debuted it in the March of 1989 upon his arrival in the National Wrestling Alliance. Initially, the character's name was the Great Mota, with the story being that he was being brought in to conquer the biases of the American wrestling fan. And the great Boto will own the wrestling business. As you said, he is a master of all the martial arts. Most people only know Kung Fu. He knows them all. He is the most unique, the most devastating, the most dangerous individual that I have had in my charge for quite some time. Thanks to the Honorable Mr. Matsuda. First feuding with Eddie Gilbert, by the summer of 1989, Muda was involved in main events against Sting for the NWA World Television title and alongside Terry Funk against Sting and NWA World Heavyweight Champion Ric Flair. 
Despite being known best as the Great Muta across much of the world, Keiji Muta was best known under his real name when competing in Japan, pulling out his alter ego whenever a storyline dictated. The character, which was influenced heavily by the great Kabuki, spawned many imitations such as Atsushi Onita's The Great Nita and Satoshi Kojima's The Great Koji. During yesterday's joint New Japan Noah show, the 60-year-old challenged New Japan's Tetsuya Naito to be his final opponent for his last singles match taking place at the Tokyo Dome on February 21st. Naito accepted the ultimatum. In other notable results from today's show, in an eight-man tag team match, all of the company's champions teamed up. GHC champion Kaito Kiyomiya joined GHC tag team champions Takashi Sugiera and Satoshi Kojima, along with GHC national champion Iho Del Dr. Wagner Jr. to defeat Keno, Katsuhiko Nakajima, Masakatsu Funaki, and Manabu Soya. And in a martial arts rules bout, Kazushi Sakuraba defeated Hideki Suzuki. Keiji Muto's last match against Tetsuya Naito on February 21st at the Tokyo Dome will cap off a night of interpromotional matches as presented by Pro Wrestling Noah. The entire card was revealed during Noah's event today in Yokohama. Coming off their angle yesterday, which saw GHC champion Kaito Kiyomiya kick IWGP world champion Kazuchika Okada in the face and the two brawling around ringside, the two champions will now face off in a non-title match as the semi-main event on that show. Also scheduled for the 10-match card will be a battle of junior heavyweight champions as New Japan's Hiromu Takahashi faces Noah's Amakusa. Wrestlers from the DDT and Tokyo Joshi Pro promotions, both owned by Noah's parent company Cyber Agent, will also be a part of the event. New Japan Pro Wrestling's New Beginning Tour continued today in Nagoya at the Aichi Prefectural Gymnasium, which is also known as Dolphins Arena. In the main event, Shingo Takagi made the first successful defense of the King of Pro Wrestling Provisional Championship, defeating the great Okan by knockout in 22 minutes and 37 seconds. Takagi is scheduled to receive an IWGP World Heavyweight title shot against Kazuchika Okada at February 11th's New Beginning event in Osaka. All Japan Pro Wrestling ran the final show of their New Year's Giant Series 2023 tour today at Tokyo's Korokan Hall and was capped off by two title matches. Itsuki Aoyagi defeated Kaz Hayashi, who traveled in from the Glate promotion. Aoyagi won the bout with a Firebird Splash to make the fourth defense of the All Japan World Junior Heavyweight title. And in the main event, Yuma Aoyagi and Naoya Nomura defeated Kento Miyahara and Takuya Nomura to win the All Japan World Tag Team Championship after Aoyagi pinned Miyahara. And finally, in ticket sales news, WWE SmackDown last Friday led last week in live attendance for the major weekly TV tapings, more than doubling the attendance of the AEW Dynamite and Rampage tapings last Wednesday, according to Russell Tix. SmackDown drew 11,777 to the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, making it the largest recorded crowd for wrestling in that building since Hell in a Cell was presented there in October of 2017, according to WrestlingData.com. Monday Night Raw last week drew 7,608 people to the Heritage Bank Arena in Cincinnati, the largest recorded crowd for wrestling in that building in nearly eight years, according to wrestling data. The Dynamite and Rampage taping came in last for the week, drawing 5,111 to the Save Mart Center in Fresno. Nevertheless, it was the largest recorded crowd for wrestling in that building in nearly seven years. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.